If you remember view filters in Universal Analytics, you may miss their capabilities and flexibility. There isn't anything quite like that in GA4. There's something called an internal traffic filter that you can use to filter traffic based on IP address, but not other dimensions like you could in Universal Analytics. I'm going to show you a trick for how to, to use that internal traffic filter to actually do a lot more. I use it a lot for excluding bot traffic, also dev traffic. And I can filter based on a variety of dimensions in addition to IP address. So first, let's have a look at that internal traffic filter and how it works. To create the internal traffic filter, we're going to click on the gear icon in the lower left to go to admin. We're going to click on our data stream. And we're going to go down here. We've got configure tag settings. And for some reason, it doesn't show all the settings. So we've got to click show more. And then we're going to do this define internal traffic. And we're going to create a traffic rule. And let's see. Let me, let me hop over to what is my IP address. And here. OK, so this is the IP address that my computer is using to access the public internet. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to paste this in here. Then, if you notice on the left, it defaults to IP addresses in range, the IDR notation. I like this option. We could change it to say IP address equals, but uh, I'm going to use this the IDR notation in. I'm not going to explain the ins and outs of CIDR notation. It's a little bit weird, but I will explain what I'm going to do, which is I'm going to go 0 slash 24. And what that does in CIDR notation is it says that I want to match 256 addresses starting with 73.217.93.0. So dot 0 through dot 255. And the reason that I'm doing that is because it is fairly common for ISPs to have a pool of IP addresses and assign them out dynamically. So the address here is what my address is right now, but I could come back in a month and it's very possible that it'll be a little bit different. It'll come out of that same pool. So you read IP addresses from left to right. This is the most general down to the most specific. And the, they'll have a block. Now, they won't necessarily have a block of 256 addresses. It might be a different block size. But without knowing that, I just generally what I'll do is do this. Uh, that 24 is called a mask to get to that those um, 256 addresses. One thing to be aware of is that because I'm, I'm saying this is dynamic through my ISP, by doing this, if my next door neighbor visits my website, they're very likely to have an IP address in the same range if, if they're using Comcast like I am to connect to the internet. So it you do run some risk of filtering out people that aren't you. I think it's worth it. Like It's unlikely that my next door neighbors are visiting my website a lot, but there could be circumstances where that is a concern and you wouldn't want to do it this way. OK, so that's uh, we've got that block filtered. I'm going to change the traffic type value to internal Nico. And I'm going to change the rule name. Well, I like the rule name to be the same as the traffic type value. And I change it from internal to internal Nico just because I might add multiple rules. And it's just an easy way to see uh, which is which. And you'll see what we do with this traffic type value in a minute. OK, so we're going to create this rule. Then we've got to go back out. And we're then going to go under Data Collection Modification and go to Data Filters. And we're going to create a filter. And it's going to be an internal traffic filter. And then I'm going to use the same name. I don't have to, but I'm going to. And I want to exclude. And then here's that traffic type value. So let me explain what's going on here. What, J4, when it sees an IP address in that range that I specified, 
it actually adds a traffic type parameter to each event that it sends to GA4 with a value of internal Nico. So that's going to be really important, that idea that it's using the IP address to set that parameter value, but the filter itself actually works on the parameter value, not the IP address. And, and we're going to take advantage of that when we go to Tag Manager to filter traffic um, from, from Tag Manager without specifying an IP address. I'm going to leave the filter as testing for now. We'll come back and look later and see if we're catching traffic. I like to do that because it is possible to make a mistake when you're setting up a filter. And let's say that you came back and you see that you're filtering out like half of your traffic and you know that it couldn't possibly be that you represent half of your traffic. Like, it's just nice to do a sanity check and make sure that you're not, um, you know, first of all, that you're catching something. So you did set it up correctly, but you're not catching too much because uh, that can be a problem. And if you do filter out traffic that you didn't want to filter out, you can't get it back. Uh, the, this type of filter is, once the traffic is gone, it's gone if we make the filter active. So we're going to leave it as testing. We're going to create this filter. And next, we're going to go to Tag Manager and set the value of that traffic type parameter based on some variables associated with the traffic. Before we do that, let's just hop over. I created an exploration to give us some things to look for. So exploration, I called it suspected bots. And I added browser, browser version, screen resolution, sessions engagement rate, average engagement time per session. Uh, the engagement time per session engagement rate, I think are useful ways to start narrowing down what looks like a bot. And I've found also that bots often use very specific browser versions and you can filter based on those. This video is not about identifying bot traffic. It's really about how to set up that filter. So we're not going to go into that in depth, but have a look at this first row here. We have this very specific browser version, screen resolution 1024 by 768. And the average engagement time is zero seconds. The engagement rate is way, way below the average. Uh, not a, a reasonable human engagement rate. Maybe there's one or two humans in that traffic. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're gonna say that that is a bot. So now let's head over to Google Tag Manager. And I'm in my Google Tag Manager account. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to go down here to my user defined variables and I'm going to call this CJS for custom JavaScript and traffic type. Now I've got custom JavaScript and I did this ahead of time. This is also not a lesson in how to write JavaScript. So I'm just going to paste this in here. And what I've done is I'm using JavaScript to get the screen resolution and the user agent. And then I'm matching on that user agent that we saw in the exploration. So again, I, I'm, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but you get the power of this, right? Like we're using JavaScript, we can get user agent, we could get host name, we get page path. A lot of times those things are what we need. Not always, but a lot of times those are the things that we need to filter on. Those are things that are available to JavaScript on the page where Tag Manager is executing. And, and so in this case, what's going to happen is if the, really in this case, likely bot visiting the website matches these values, then this variable is going to return the value suspected bot. One thing about JavaScript, the function, it'll just return null if these conditions aren't met, which is fine. Uh, in, in fact, in the case of parameters in GA4, if the value is null, it doesn't actually send the parameter at all. So we're going to save this parameter, CJS traffic type. Then I'm going to go over to tags. I'm going to go to my uh, Google tag, still called the configuration tag. And I'm going to edit this and I'm going to add a parameter. I'm going to call this traffic type. And I'm going to grab that JavaScript traffic type variable. That is it. Now I'm going to save this. 
Let's see, going to, I've got two changes. That's adding the variable, the change to the tag. We should preview and test this out. I can't, I can't actually test it because I don't have that browser version. Since all it's doing is setting that traffic type parameter, I'm gonna go ahead and submit. And I'm going to say added added traffic type parameter to Google tag. I'm going to publish that. Then I go back to GA4 and I'm going to go to admin and I can skip that internal traffic step. I just go straight to data filters. I'm gonna create a filter. I now, this part's weird. I'm picking internal traffic again, even though it's not internal traffic. And the data filter name, again, I like to name it the same as that traffic type value, which I was suspected bot. And I'm gonna leave this in testing. We're gonna create that. And let's give it a few days and we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm back. What was a few moments for you was actually ended up being a couple weeks for me because that bot took its time to come back. I'm going to go to my exploration. We'll have a look. And there it is. See? So we got some sessions with that suspected bot value for the test data filter and a couple of my visits. I did validate. I went and looked and the bot was definitely back. There was like a one day spike. It was on a Saturday. We don't get a lot of traffic on Saturdays. The engagement rate was basically zero. So uh, that's what we wanted to find. We're gonna go now to admin and to our data filters. And I'm just gonna go ahead and enable both of them. So I'm gonna make this active. And I'm gonna make this active. And there it is, so. I've included some links to some blog posts um, that go into how to identify bot traffic, how to exclude it from reports, uh, in, in how to find characteristics associated with bot traffic. And check out toctobers.com to see our services related to analytics. We do a variety of things, including training. So if you need any help, uh, give us a shout. Thanks a ton for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, please click the like button.